this is Jonathan. Welcome back to my channel. I want to welcome the new viewers who may have stumbled across my channel. And of course, I'm always happy to welcome back my... I always want to say old viewers, but that's not right. Uh, viewers that have been with me for a while. There we go. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so I got this lovely gift in the mail from our lovely Diane Wood Thrush Cottage. And um, I was going to open this, but I decided I wanted to open it on camera. And look, it's sealed. We got like a wax seal here. So I think I might just cut this open because <laughs> I don't want to mess up the seal here. So. I hope I'm not cutting anything in there. I don't think so. Huh? Oh, maybe I just did this time. So, let's see. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is amazing. My sweeties heading off to the hardware store to get some gardening stuff. Oh wow, this smells amazing. It's a wood thrush. Oh, Diane painted this herself. I love it. Okay. Oh, oh my God, this is so creative. Um, so I did ask. I, I made sure that. It was okay for me to share. Um, this is beautiful. Okay, Jonathan, aloha. Thank you for the thoughtful and inspiring content you create on your channel. How fun it is to connect with you through the friendly Turo community. I am very grateful you will give us, give this mermaid deck a Hawaiian home. Warm wishes to you, yours truly, Diane at Wood Thrush Cottage. Well, thank you, Diane, for offering to send me the Dame Darcy Mermaid deck. I've been wanting it for a long time. And um, I'm sorry you didn't connect with it. But let's see. Oh, did you? You did open it, didn't you? <laughs> let's see here. Oh, a lot of paper. Okay. Oh no, you never even opened it? Oh wow, Diane! I, I I'm I'm at a loss for words. I can't thank you enough for this. You didn't even open it. Wow! Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, well, it looks like it comes with some Dame Darcy. Are these stickers? I think they must be stickers. Wow, Diane, I'm I'm at a loss for words. I can't. I. I, <laughs> I can't believe that you bought this and didn't even open it, and then sent it straight to me. That's that means so much to me, really, Diane. I I just I, I'm at a loss for words, and I think I just need to get in here. So this is brand, brand new. Wow, Diane. I just... Uh, so thoughtful of you to do this for me. It's, it really means a lot. So thank you so much. This is... This is amazing. So how do I open it? Oh, okay. It's one of the magnetic types, huh? Looks like we start with the High Priestess here. When I was a child, I lived on top of the Rocky Mountains on a horse ranch, but I saw the ocean every time I closed my eyes. 
Mermaid is a race, and Atlantis encompasses every color of the rainbow. I made this for you, for it has found its way to your hands, and our hearts are bound in shared memories of Atlantis. Heart Dame Darcy. I'm assuming the PR code is to download the booklet that goes with it. I'm so, I'm sorry, I keep losing myself because I'm just flabbergasted. Gorgeous matte gold edging, beautiful backs. Oh, Dame Darcy. Please go to damedarcy.com, book section, the mermaid tarot deck. Okay, so that's how I get the guide. Okay, I don't know if this is in order, because it starts with the high priestess here. So I guess we're just gonna see what we got. We have high priestess, followed by tower. Hmm. Maybe I should pause the video and organize this deck before we go through it. So that we can do it in order. But that is a nice chunky deck with the matte gold is gorgeous. So yeah, let me pause for a moment. I'll get this organized and then we can go through it. So just one moment. There we go, all sorted. Now let us... I'm not surprised that this was jumbled because that would be mermaid energy, right? They are very playful. So here we have the fool, and I love that she's just ha 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 laughing and diving into the ocean. Very different fool energy with this one, huh? Just dive right in, jump through that portal. The great magician. Has the four suits. It's kind of like controlling the waters too. It looks like very magical. High priestess. We have the two pomegranates instead of two pillars, but you definitely get that same priestess vibe, especially with the scroll under her arm. I think it's kind of nestled in her arm. Empress. I'm not getting a lot of mother energy from this card, but you know, the Empress is so much more than just being a mother. I always like comparing the two. It looks like her arm is in there, huh? Right. That's kind of an interesting little effect there. Here we have the Hierophant underwater. The only of the Hierophant figure is a statue. So it makes it even more like learning the old ways, right? The lovers, we still get that angel in the background vibe. But we have mermaid lovers which kind of cuts those trees out, which I actually appreciate on the big heart. <laughs> the chariot, looks like a mermaid and dolphins going through an area of sand castles. <laughs> very, very pretty. Strength. They're just frolicking. I love how they have matching crowns. The hermit is in his sea cave. I really like this hermit card, actually. It's one of the cards I always look for in the deck because being a Virgo, the hermit is my star card, star sign card. 
wheel of fortune. I love how it's a captain's wheel of a boat. A ship, I guess is the proper term. You still get a couple of those figures reading blank books, right? Writing your fortune in. Definitely some different vibes going on with the little imp. The snake's climbing up instead of coming down. You still get this sphinx like character, but it looks more like a harpy. That's interesting take on I love this justice card. Sitting in the clam with the pearl of wisdom next to her. Ace of swords in one hand. The scales of Anubis in the other. At least that's what it's usually supposed to represent. Oh, that's interesting. What this brings to mind, this hanged man, <clears throat> it brings to mind the idea that sailors used to lash themselves to the mast if they were going through areas where sirens were known to sing. So that's kind of what I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting from here. Oh. Getting some dropsies here. Okay, here we have death. It's like a sailor at the bottom of the sea, and death is riding a seahorse, but still has the typical death flag. That <laughs> that's a very interesting take. The bubbles are still coming up from this guy who's just laying there at the bottom of the sea. Oh, it looks like he's chained too. Maybe he's weighted down. And here we have Temperance. Is she in a sea cave, maybe? And has two conch shells instead of cups. The devil turning some merfolk into devil folk, it looks like. That devil. He's scary and he's crying at the same time. <laughs> Here we have the tower. It's on fire, but it's about to get taken down by a giant wave. God, I'm getting dropsies. <laughs> I was watching Jen's balance throw earlier. She must have rubbed off on me a little. <laughs> no offense, Jen. Um, so she's falling, but it looks like he's already landed and is like trying to crawl to safety or maybe crawl to her. Very interesting tower card. I love how this star card here is a mermaid but she also looks kind of elf-like with those pointed ears. And again you get conch shells instead of jugs. That's an interesting take on it. And she's pretty much mostly submerged in the water, but she's leaning on the earth. So you still get that duality vibe, but it's definitely different than the angel with one foot of land and one foot in water. Oh wow, I really like this moon card. Let's get rid of the dogs and the towers and let's just have what you think is a lovely woman, but in reality she's a octopus merfolk, maybe? Although the octopus tentacles look different than the little bit of tail we see here. So what's the reality, the octopus or the mer lady? Here we have the happy child, but in this case it's the happy mermaid riding a seahorse. Still very joyful. Oh, judgment. It's underwater, but at the same time the person blowing the horn is 
It looks like they're in the air, but they're underwater at the same time. That's kind of confusing. But I understand what they're going for with this. All right. The judgment vibe, but still underwater with the mermaids. Then we have the world. It's a curiosity. Oh, uh, yeah. No, the fool has definitely changed. And now we're going into the wands. Ace of wands is an or. Interesting. It's kind of hard to get fire energy with the water, though, right? Two of Wands, very typical Two of Wands image, down to the globe in the hand and the hand on the staff. Oh, here instead of the ships just being like small little blips, they take up a big chunk of the image here, so that idea of moving on, the idea of travel, of Creating something new is very strong in this card, where it's uh, more hinted at in the right way. Here we have Four of Wands, the sailor marrying the mermaid, maybe? I love how the wands are oars. Oh no, the mermaids are fighting. Oh, she looks mad. Mm. Six of Wands. He's uh, triumphant on a seahorse with the wreath of victory. And everyone else has seaweed on their wands. Or oars, since the wands are oars here. Whoa. That is a very chaotic Seven of Wands. It's like she's fighting for her life. She looks a little crazed. Eight of Wands. The oars are heading for the ocean to propel the boat they're in, maybe? Definitely a water deck, for sure. Nine of Wands. Oh, come on, Merlady, you don't need those oars. You're a mermaid. Oh, she definitely seems burdened by those wands, huh? And then we have the page of wands. Looks like he's looking for a branch to turn into an oar. Knight of wands. I guess we get a little bit of that fire energy with those feathers there. Oh, and the horse mane as well is very fiery. Queen of Wands. We get the giant lion face instead of. Do I? I don't really see a kitten there anywhere. But there's the sunflower. Sorry, it took me a second here. I'm just looking here. It looks like she's got a boat on her hat. <laughs> oh, did I? I got that out of order. So. Oh no, that's right. For some reason I thought that was the knight. That's the king of wands here. Very shadowy figure, huh? Definitely brainstorming and thinking about his next move. 
I don't know why I thought that was the night. <laughs> Here we go, continuing that conch in place of a vessel, conch in place of the Ace of Cups. So here the conch is the cup. Here we have two of cups, star-crossed lovers, the sailor and the mermaid, giving each other conches, maybe? Three of Cups. These merfolk are definitely having some fun. Dancing in the waves. Enjoying each other's company. Four of Cups. Oh, she sees the cup and does not look amused, which is very different from most Four of Cups. She's got the four down here that look tiny. And someone's offering a bigger one, and she's just kind of glaring. So usually when I see the Four of Cups, I see it as like a call to meditation. In this case, it's like, stop being so upset with the way things are, and just embrace things as they are. God, what's with the dropsies today? Five of Cups. Here we have the spilled red cups, and the two behind. And it's interesting, even though we don't have a building here, we still have that bridge going over the river. So where is this? I guess this must be a river mermaid. I love this filigree here of the plants. Flowering vine, maybe? There's a little bit here, too. Oh. Siren time. Here we have Six of Cups. Well, that's interesting that just juxtaposition of a human offering a cup of flowers to a mermaid. So it's a kind of memory of childhood with the mermaids, I guess. So if anyone's wondering about this change in background, our spread cloth. This is actually, last time my mom was here, she brought a mermaid tail blanket and I just kind of folded it up so I could use it as the backdrop because what would be more perfect for a mermaid deck than a mermaid blanket tail card spreading cloth. <laughs> Seven of Cups. Oh, I get the typical imagery, but instead of cups we have um, what are those? Those are scallops, maybe? Eight of Cups. Very typical image, and you actually have very similar to the Rider Waite Smith Cups sitting here, too. I love how this person is in the blank spot. So, they are that ninth cup, which we get here. Sitting at the table, has nine cups lined up. Looks like they're at a party. Woo, party time! <laughs> and a very typical ten of cups, except at the shore with their house there. But you still have the couple with their kids and the cups and the rainbow. So. This deck will definitely be easy to read with, I think. Huh. Page of Cups is so interested in the fish in his cup, he missed the mermaid behind him. Knight of Cups, it's like a Polynesian dude riding a seahorse. It's the ocean, but there almost looks like a waterfall right here. That's interesting. Hmm. 
Queen of Cups, Mermaid with Butterfly Wings, and again those elfin, elf-like ears. And we have the King of Cups, looking very Roman or Greek. And Regal with his dolphin holding. A cu uh, he's drinking with a dolphin. Okay. <laughs> Ace of Swords. I see the swords here are going to be tridents. Very typical Two of Swords, except it's a mermaid holding tridents. And I can see why Diane really wanted this deck here in Hawaii, because it definitely got a Hawaii on a feel with all the tropical islands with palm trees. Three of Swords. Very interesting with the eyes, huh? And it looks like the drops are blood, not just rain or tears. But very traditional heart with three swords. Four of Swords, she's sleeping in the seagrass. That's an interesting image there. I apologize if I haven't held the cards up high enough. Five of Swords. Looks like a Thunderstorms happening. Don't sink your ship. Trying to win. I love how many sailors there are in here. Six of swords. We have a sailor rowing two merfolk away. That's interesting. And I guess that's the promised land over there. Seven of Swords, must be a pirate, he's got an eye patch even. Tattered clothes, but stealing this. What's he sitting on? Is he sit? <laughs> it's like he's sitting on the wave, almost. That's an interesting image there. Here we have the Eight of Swords. Pretty traditional image. You know, the Dame Darcy style, though. Here we have Nine of Swords. Got tridents piercing her. Definitely a different version of Night Terrors here. And the Ten of Swords. Sunken ship, broken anchor. And is that dawn or sunset? Page of Swords. Very elegant and colonial. It is an interesting Knight of Swords. Angry Merman riding a shark with his trident at the ready sun at his back. Oh, that's a powerful queen of swords. Definitely get the what is it? The martyr? Not the martyr queen. Uh, I'm having a brain fart here. The um Widowed Queen, right? And this King of Swords is very... Like, captain of a ship in the Navy kind of vibe. And actually, this King of Swords is very androgynous. Could be male or female. Uh, 
and our last suit, the pentacles. I love this collecting of shells here. It's something I do myself. Two of pentacles. I don't get quite the staying in balance vibe you usually get with the two of pentacles, but I mean I can see the where it's coming from, right? She just looked behind her. There's a pearl waiting to be harvested. Three of Pentacles. She is building a statue, but it looks like she's doing it solo. So I don't understand where the working with others vibe is here. It's a beautiful image, but. Maybe she's continuing the work of others. Four of Pentacles. Huh. So that is not a Mar person, and they are clutching their pentacles underwater. Definitely some interesting artwork in this deck. Five of Pentacles. Huh. They're hiding in an icy cave. Or so they just look behind them, there's a, is that a burning bush? Which doesn't really make sense for the earth, but that's okay. Oh, that's a great image for the Six of Pentacles, a boat, like overflowing, like so much wealth that is dropping into the sea. Seven of Pentacles is basically an underwater version of the typical image. You know, seaweed instead of a bush. Looks like one pentacle got harvested and she's waiting for the rest. Here we have the Eight of Pentacles. I don't really see work happening here, but I get what it's trying to say. And I do appreciate that her tail is gold, just like the gold she's working with. But yeah, there's no, just if she just had a tool in her hand or something. Nine of Pentacles. Oh. You don't get the hooded hawk, but you do get a very rich merfolk digging in her treasure chest. That definitely gives the Nine of Pentacles vibe for sure. Uh -huh. Definitely have a uh, RWS vibe here with the, the old man wearing his robe instead of dogs. He's got dolphins and these two are talking while ignoring the king it looks like and the king's castle in the background and they still Dame Darcy still did the tree of life with the pentacles which is a nice touch. It always seems wrong to me when I see a ten of pentacles and they don't have it in the tree of life shape because that's kind of the point. <laughs> Here we have the Page of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles sitting in wait, right? Waiting to take his action, making sure that it's the right action. Queen of Pentacles, looking very regal. And the King of Pentacles on the shore with all kinds of vines. Yeah, definitely get an earthy vibe with this one. So I realize now that they purposely shuffled the deck 
so that you could just start using it as soon as you open the box. But I wanted to, I like going through in order. So now that I have gone through, I want to see how nice this shuffles. Because I am a rifle shuffler. Rif I always say rifle. It's riffle shuffle, isn't it? Ooh, that is a nice shuffle, though, I must say. Obviously a very new deck. You can always tell a new deck because it doesn't bridge as easily as one of my decks I've been shuffling for a while. But there are definitely a few decks that just right out the box they shuffle beautifully. So I, did, I guess I never mentioned the cardstock. So that's the back. And it is a really nice cardstock. It's thick. It's probably why it doesn't bridge so well. But the more I do it, the easier it does. So that's always a good sign. Once I shuffle a little, just to make sure it's really nice and mixed. I'll do a little overhand, and then let's pull a random three cards and see. Maybe what I should start doing is, after I do an unboxing, I should do a deck interview right here, on camera. But since I... well, I guess I could, actually. I just gotta pull it, off of my, pull it up on my phone or something. But who wants to watch me do a deck interview? So, if you think that's a good idea for me to start doing deck interviews during one of my unboxings, please let me know in the comments. If you think it's a bad idea, please let me know in the comments. Yeah, see, the more I shuffle, the easier it gets. So I just need a little breaking in. Let's do a little overhand. Oh yeah, this shuffles nicely. This is a beautiful deck. I thought I'd have a hard time connecting because it's not the typical artwork I go for, but I always find that if someone gives me a deck, I seem to connect with it a lot easier. So, maybe that's where that gatekeeping myth comes from. You can't buy your own decks. Yeah, no thanks. Some of my favorite decks I bought myself, so... Then again, some of my favorite decks others gifted me, so there is no right or wrong. You can buy your own decks, and you can have them gifted to you. You, can't, you don't have to do one or the other, you can do both. So, let's see here. Let's just pull three random cards. The Moon. Three of Cups. And Eight of Wands. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay. So, with this spread, if I was doing a reading for somebody, um... So a lot of times when I do three cards, it's the situation, the challenge, and the advice. So in this case, situation is moon, so I'd tell the person, don't let your illusions lead you the wrong way, don't like feel like you're trapped in the darkness with nowhere to go, you have to shine your own light, you have to be, um, you have to be your own light, right? You have to be that light shining in the darkness. And trust your instincts here. Trust your intuition. But make sure it's your intuition and not your imagination. Because those are two sides of the same coin. And the challenge here is the Three of Cups. So that challenge is... Like, 
living for the party, living for that connection with others to the point where you put yourself aside. So that combination here is like you're letting the your illusions of like your life being fulfilled by companionship dissuade you from following your own path because you're worried about what the others will think. And so the final advice or action here is eight of wands, right? You have to, again, you get the water. So you have to listen to your instincts and act on your instincts. Don't pause to think about it. He who hesitates is lost. So you have to take that energy of the moon and just move with it. Like take that internal knowing and act on it as soon as possible. Like. As soon as you get that vibe, you got to do the thing. And it doesn't matter what the others think because more than likely your friends are going to love you no matter what. If they are true friends, then they're not going to judge you. They're not going to think less of you if you follow your intuition, right? So don't fall into the illusion of false friendship. Do what's right. Take action when needed and be swift about it. Don't, don't hesitate because he who hesitates is lost so there that is my reading for those of you watching this and again um, I can't thank Diane enough for sending this deck to me it's I think it's gonna be a great deck to read with and it is going to definitely mean a lot to me because it's a gift from our wood thrush cabin so thank you diane this is amazing it's an amazing gift and i'm just flabbergasted i really am just completely flabbergasted that you sent me a brand new copy i hadn't even opened it so it's it's one of those things that i i, am, I will never be able to thank you enough and this community has been so amazing and giving and welcoming with open arms and I've lost count of how many people have sent me wonderful gifts and I just thank you thank you so much not just Dan but everyone else who sent me something and all of you watching right now because without you guys well, what's the point of me doing this? So thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to using this deck on one of my Tuesday live readings. And now that I have this deck, I really, I need to sit down with all of my decks. And um, there's a few VRs I want to do, a few tags that I think would be perfect. Like Jen's Balance Row Balance balance the decks this would be a great water deck um, and there's a few other VRs out there I think the amount of decks I have now it would be perfect to do some VRs um, especially like uh, Brant's Moon Babies uh, what is it the uh, Tarot Collector I think that would be perfect for this too because this would be my newest deck I'm going to leave these in here I think these are stickers yeah they are very cool not just stickers but stickers I get to color in so gotta love that so again thank you our lovely wood thrush cottage Diane for this amazing gift um, again, like I said, over and over again, I will never be able to thank you enough. So, I hope this video is the start of a good thank you. Thanks for watching and taking this journey with me. I hope that, uh, I get a few tidbits from you guys whether or not I should do deck interviews when I'm doing unboxings. And also, let me know, do you have Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot? What do you think of it? What has been your experience with it? Um, let me know in the comments whether, you know, either good or bad, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to know how it's been for you working with the deck.
Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you know when I put out some new content. Until next time, aloha.